when the court says test, it doesn't matter whether she had received those pictures or not. I was very clear with you that there were no more excuses you needed to test. All right, recall in the matter of the state of Michigan versus Everett Buck, case number 23S86. Preacher McGuffin for the people. Assistant Public Defender Sandra White on behalf of Everett Buck. Mr. Buck, please state your name again. Uh, Everett Buck. Thank you. Ms. White, what would your client like to do? Admit to the violation with an explanation. Mr. Buck, please raise your right hand to be sworn. <clears throat> other right sir do you swear yeah. that the testimony you're about to provide will be the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth i do thank you you may lower your hand so sir is it true that you missed your test on december the 12th january 10th january 17th january 30th february 5th and february 16th yes your honor find that there's a knowing and willing admission to the violation are you satisfied miss miss mcduffie Yes, Your Honor. Satisfied. Thank you. So please explain how I would, ex what I would, please explain because we've been dealing with his mistest since he first started this in June. And we've had, this is the third violation for missing his test. I did, dis um, I did okay. discuss that with Mr. Buck. He said that in the last couple of months, his truck went down. And because his truck went down, he had no transportation and he could not also go to work. So he had no money to do a Lyft or an Uber. And therefore, he also had no money to test. He did try to get rides, but because he had no money to pay for the testing, he was unable to also pay anybody to give him rides. Uh, he did try to contact Ms. Wild on several occasions. He finally got in touch with her last week. And Ms. Wild says she hadn't gotten the messages, but he did try to get in touch with her several occasions over the last few months. Ms. McDuffie? Where to start? Um, so first, with respect to, I'm not sure what the issue would have been trying to contact Agent Wild, especially over several months. Um, I don't, I don't understand what that, what that's about. Um, why phone, email, whatever method to contact would not have been successful trying to reach her. Um, so I, I don't, I don't understand that part, and why contact would not have also gone out to basically everyone, the attorneys, the court. Um, when there's an issue and Mr. Buck knows where he stood with respect to testing, I would think, um, if I were in that position, I would be ringing all the alarms to everybody I could, um, trying to make sure that they knew that I was making the attempt to comply. So I'm just, I'm not really sure about that part. Uh, with right. respect, <clears throat> I'm sorry. With respect to the truck, um, Mr. Buck gave us an explanation about that the last time when we were here on December 11th, and he talked about he had proof of his truck being towed and things like mm. that. So, the Mr. Buck, are you talking still? No. Okay. Um. So, um. So it's been a, a I guess a known issue at the least that there was some sort of car trouble. Actually, that was on, we we have been here since then on January uh, 22nd and he had, you know, some um, violations or some mistesting too. So if if it's been an issue with the transportation and this truck not being reliable since December, I, I understand funds are limited and, you, and a person can't necessarily Uber everywhere they need to go. But again, I don't understand why we're here today hearing about all of this as if it's sort of a, well, it's not new clearly because we've been here before, but I just, that explanation um, we've heard it before, and I'm 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 still not really sure how to take the representation that his agent was not reachable, especially for that long period of time. Um, is it okay to speak? Yes, sir. If it's okay with your attorney. Um, I Mr. Was, Buck, I, do you wish to speak? Either although I did speak to the court, you still wish to speak? Yes, please. Okay. I um, I had been advised by uh, Attorney Lebo at the time of the matter when this took place, and which is uh, congruent with the start of me missing the test. He had asked me. He said, "Okay, I'm going to text you my email. Email me the photos." And then, right after following emailing uh, the photos to me, call Miss Wild to get a hold of her. 
Well, I called her four times right after I emailed the photos that day when it started and left two voicemails. And I don't know what had happened, but every time that I would try to get a hold of her, it would go to voicemail. And I know I know of one occasion where I called her and she was on launch, which I can vouch for that. Um, and that was the only time that I had called and they had told me she was on launch. Other times it went to voicemail, so I left her voicemails. And then I wasn't able to actually speak with her until this past Wednesday when she had um, ordered the violation, when she had published it. And I said, well, I was advised by my attorney to do these things in this order. And the I had imagined, I would hope that the photos in which Mr. Lebo got on his email would go to the courts and that I he further asked me to explain my circumstances to Department of Corrections. And I don't know, I said, I don't understand, you know, if that's been sent to you or the court or whatever. And she goes, and she had explained to me that she, she alleged that she hadn't got any calls. She hadn't had any voicemails. And I was like, well, I spoke, I spoke to the front desk four times in one day. And they were getting kind of irritable about it because I kept trying to get forwarded back. And I just, I just kept end up calling it over and over again. And they, they had explained to me to try and call the next day because they're really busy. So I did. And it just, it never went through. And then Wednesday, I finally got a hold of her. I was able to explain to her and, you know, finalize what I need to do to make sure that I don't end up in jail because I just don't want to be in jail. Nobody wants to be in jail. And I'm trying to abide by these ter these terms. And I was in a position where my truck was inoperable. I'm calling everybody I know and trying to cover my rear end as my attorney advised me to. And it just seemed like, and without money and everything else, it just, it all got really bad, really quick. <laughs> and I just, it was, the only thing I could do at that time was get a hold of the Department of Corrections to explain to them and express to them that, hey, this is what's going on. My attorney advised that I do this after sending in photos. And that, was, that didn't happen until Wednesday this past week. I did everything I could to make sure that I didn't have to come here again on another violation because God forbid, when I'm trying, something goes wrong. And, you know, here we are again. <laughs> All right. I find that the defendant has uh, violated and that I told you last time I would not have any excuses as to why you were not showing up to test, sir. So I meant that. There were no excuses. I understand, Your Honor. Bond is revoked. You need to turn yourself in at the Washington County Jail. Um, okay, by, can, can I have a certain time? I'm out of town at the moment. Not out of the state. Not out of the state. I'm just out of, out of town. Well, you can do what you will on issuing a bench warrant with no bond. I was just asking, Your Honor, if. Mr. Bob, I don't think you quite understand. When the court says test, it doesn't matter whether she had received those pictures or not. I was very clear with you that there were no more excuses you needed to test. So I that wouldn't have changed anything anyway. I and understand that. And I, 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 in the most indefinite understanding, was not trying to make an excuse or, you know, claim I didn't understand or I had some misconception of what was said. I just was doing exactly as I was told with the hopes that, you know, it, I was doing the right thing and in the in the best regard for the court, obviously, and the Department of Corrections and the bond and myself, last but not least, under my my attorney's advisory. You've been on bond since June of 2023. Yes, yes, I believe I believe it. Yeah. And you're supposed to be testing. It looks like three times a month and you've made maybe 12 of those tests out of that entire time really i do i do recall your honor the the my fault on the misconception uh, regarding when i called the courthouse and he had told me that everything was on was on hold i do recall that and that was my fault 
So I understand that it's been rough going. I'm I'm just and I didn't and I the same day that I got my truck back running, which was Wednesday when I got a hold of Miss Wild, I told her I said I can come in and and Mr. Buck, I think um, the judge understands everything now. Okay. I'm just, I'm, I'm trying not to end up in jail. I, I really don't, I, I got a kid and everything else. I just can't, I can't afford, let alone, you know, just overall be in jail. Can't, I'm trying, <laughs> trying, trying to do right. But it just seems like, you know, you take one step forward and you set 10 steps back. <laughs> it's crazy. I'm on down with this case, Mr. Buck. You're putting yourself into the jail.